So welcome to my new channel. My name is Philip and I'm from Abut Muniken. New channel here on YouTube. I hope I make more videos in the future about Munich, about the culture in Munich, about uh, things to eat and drink in Munich. And I thought I start with a very easy new uh, video to start with, to edit. Um, it's a video about the beer of Munich. So um, what you have to know is when you go to a restaurant or a beer garden here in Munich, they only serve one brand of beer. So it's not like in other countries where you have like, I don't know, 10 taps with different brands of beer. Here in Munich, mostly uh, in, in, uh, in bars and in restaurants, you will get one brand. And um, they can be from all around the country, from all around Germany, but mainly the, those beer are from Munich and I will introduce you to the Munich beer. So we have uh, six Munich beer brands and the seven one. I will introduce it to you. So the first one is Löwen, no, wrong. So the first one is Hofbräuhaus. So Hofbräuhaus, uh, I think everybody knows, the famous beer hall in the middle of the city. Then Paulana, Hackabschur, Löwenbräu, or our American friends, they say Lauenbrühe to it, but it's Löwenbräu. Um, then we have Spaten and finally Augustina. And then I have a white card here, that's Giesinger, which is a quite new brewery uh, and a smaller brewery, but also a, a brewery here in Munich. And then of course we have some other small breweries like for example Airbräu, which is the brewery at the Munich airport, the only airport who has a brewery in the world and um, also like Forschungsbrauerei. I will introduce it, you to the, them in later videos, but first of all, visit it. So like I said, when you go to a restaurant or a beer garden, you, you will have one brand of beer, but you will have different types. And the first, the basic type is Hell or Helles, which means in German bright or light beer. So it's a light clear lager around 5% volume. And from those six beers I have here in the seventh one, so the one most people go to is Augustina. Why most of those other brands belong to international companies like Interbrew or uh, Anoisa Busch, you can look it up. Um, Augustina is the only one who still uh, is, a pr is private, privately owned. And uh, I think also that they do a lot of good um, Good stuff like humanitarian stuff to, to help people here in Munich. So if you have a party here in Munich, the only thing you can serve is Augustina and also Giesinger. So which one do you like the most is the question. Well, I prefer really Augustina. Um, some people really, really love Giesinger. I'm not, but that's my personal taste. I'm not the biggest fan of Giesinger. It's very hopsy, very yeasty but some people really love this stuff so if you're here in munich it's worth a try try it at least once maybe it's to it's totally your stuff i prefer the augustina over all the all of them of course there are also other beers here in munich one of those beers is dunkel so if there's a hell there's a dunkel this is just a dark beer which means this beer is more more roasted yeah so the malt is a little bit more roasted so sometimes it has a little bit more uh, caramelly taste has a little more refined taste when i go out to eat i fr prefer this beer over the hellas the hellas is a workhorse uh, when i have a party when i know that it will be a long evening i will go to hellas hellas and dunkles are served in two type of glasses either when you go to a restaurant wirt's house you will have those glasses glasses that's an o4 glass or no, that's an 05 glass, but you will, will be served in 04 or an 05 glass like that. If you go to uh, clubs, discotheques, they mainly have like little bottles like that or three glasses. And uh, if you go to a, a beer garden or you go to the Oktoberfest, you have those glasses, which is called a Mass, not a Stein, that's one liter of beer. And there's a reason for that. So if you're in a restaurant, you can get those masses. But I wouldn't recommend it to you. The reason is why you get in restaurants um, those O5 glasses is because you have an order. You, you, sorry, you have a waiter, a waiter, so you can order your beer, um, and you always have a fresh beer. 
while in the beer garden you want to stay with your friends you want to enjoy the sun or the shades under the chestnut trees and you want to stay with your friends and it's self-service so sometimes there's a long queue and you have to stand there in front of it so uh, it's better that you have a big beer so you can stay more time with your friends and you don't have to stand in the queue for another beer and have to leave the group every half an hour so that's why you have a big mug there the so same with the oktoberfest and you're on the oktoberfest it can take a while till you get a new beer so this is the reason why helles and dunkles are served in those glasses then you also have uh, what you can find there on the menu pilsner beer but uh, Pilsner beer is not a Bavarian beer, it's not a Munich be uh, beer from Munich. It's like the name says, it's a beer from Pilsen, which is in the Czech Republic. So. But Pilsner is the most popular beer, I would say, all around in Germany. So the most beer you can find outside Bavaria is Pilsner beer. Uh, I won't introduce it to you, uh, to you this beer, because I'm... Uh, first of all, I don't think it's Munich beer and I'm not the biggest fan. And it's. It's kind of bitter and, and I'm not the biggest fan, maybe because I'm raised here while Hylos is more on the sweeter side and it's more really drinkable. I'm not a huge fan of Pilsner. I always get thirsty from, from Pilsner beer. So the next table, the next beer you can find on every menu here in Munich is Weiss beer. Weiss beer is a wheat beer. You've, it's really a Bavarian beer. And um, what differentiates the Hellas from the uh, wheat beer is that the Weiss beer is top fermented. So uh, the yeast does a lot of work and it's really give, gives the, um, the Weiss beer a banana flavor, uh, sometimes a little bit cloves flavor. So it has really, there's a lot going on, on in, in Weiss beer. And um, if I'm in the mood, I'm, I really like Weiss beer from time to time. Um, but it's also not a beer I would drink in big, big, uh, big amounts because, like I said, Helles is the workhorse here. But you can also find Helles in a, in a dark configuration, so it's also you can have a vice beer which is dark. So the next beer I like to introduce to you is one of my absolute favorites. It's Keller beer. So Keller beer is like Helles, but it's not um, filtered. So you have a lot of uh, so it's not clear like the Hellas, it's cloudy and it's, but it has very, a lot of character. It has a very good taste. I prefer it when I, um, when I find it on the mini, I always order, I always order Keller beer. Um, this brand is not from Munich, but that's the one I found. Sometimes you can find Keller beer uh, named Zwickel. So that's also a name. Um, it's also a type of Keller beer, so those types of beers are actually my, my, total, my absolute favorite beers. Then we have seasonal beers. So seasonal beer is, for example, during the Oktoberfest. You find Oktoberfest beer here only in September, maybe October. Um, of course, on the Oktoberfest itself, but also in the supermarkets, you find bottles of Oktoberfest beer. Oktoberfest beer is a little bit, little bit like Helles, but it has more percentage, so it's around 6%. If you go to the Oktoberfest, be careful. It will get you <sighs> drunk easily. So another type of seasonal beer you can find here in Munich um, is in the spring is uh, Bock beer. Bock beer is a very strong beer. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't found any in the supermarket, but I've, at least I found a Weiss beer in the Bock configuration. It has 8.2% uh, alcohol, so it's very strong. You can also find like more the Helles type in form of Bock, and they got around 6%. 6%. Then there's something called Doppelbock. Doppelbock is even more, has more percentage, is seven percent. If you are here in uh, March, um, maybe April, but March, March, February, you can find it. And all those um, Bock beers here have the name Salvator, Triumphator, so they always end with Ator, Ator. So you know that this is a strong beer, and it has more than seven, seven point five percent. And then, last but not least, you sometimes find it is Eisbock. And Eisbock is a very special beer because when you brew a beer, you only can go so far with a percentage of alcohol. So what they do is they, they brew a Bock beer and then they freeze it down and they skim the ice. So the percentage of 
uh, or the percentage of alcohol to water ratio is getting even higher. So ice, uh, ice bock can be around eight and nine percent. And all the bo bock beers have a caramel note, sometimes a little bit burnt, so it's an acquired taste. From time to time, I like it. It's not my favorite beer every day. And then, of course, if you're a driver, there's always the alcohol-free option as well on the menu. And then you find something which is called Radler or Russen, sometimes even Cola Weiss. Those are mixed drinks. So what is very common here in Munich is that you, especially in the summer, that you mix your Helles with lemonade. So half and half lemonade, half Helles is a Radler, which is very refreshing. Sometimes I prefer it over a normal beer in the summer when I'm very sweaty and I'm thirsty. I, my first beer will be a Radler. And um, there's also something called a Saurer Radler, which is a beer with uh, bubble water, with carbonated water. I'm not the biggest fan of it, but some people like it. So they drink half beer, half carbonated water. Okay. And then there's Russen, which is actually the same. Just the difference is that they use ice beer and lemonade. Yeah? And the last thing you can find is Cola Weizen sometimes. This is also Weiss beer, but with Coca-Cola. I hope you enjoyed the little introduction into Munich beer. Um, if you have more questions, please contact me. Uh, also, if you're interested in personalized guides here in, in Munich, contact me. I'm happy to show you around in my city. You will see I'm not only interested in alcohol, but also in culture and food. I hope there will be more videos in the future, a little bit more refined videos. And um, like, subscribe, and um, see you in the next video.